morning, everyone. Did you hear? So I'll be talking about uh, Splunk um, enterprise security. Um, how how Splunk has expanded beyond just log aggregation and log analytics into um, a security <coughs> a platform, a central uh, core into security operations. Uh, our safe harbor, um, I might be making some <coughs> forward-looking statements about future product directions. This is just to let you know that these are just as, as they are, no promises. Uh, so how many of you are familiar with Splunk or use Splunk today? Okay, a few, a few of you. So I'll give you an overview of what, uh, what, uh, what we came about, what's our mission. Uh, we all, we're, we're all surrounded by machine data. Uh, machine data from, you know, of course, from the servers, machines, mobile phones, from sensors. Uh, when, you know, some buildings, when you open the door, there's a, definitely a sensor firing off a data about who's coming in when you badge, badge your card. So uh, that machine data is valuable. And especially what has to do with uh, to securing our business, uh, to run the operation of our, of our business, our services. Uh, this is an example of, if we look at, um, data that we have surrounded uh, around um, or c commerce, right? Let's say this is a, a commerce site. I have uh, data for my order, order processing in the, back, in the back office of the, of the service. There's some middleware uh, uh, logs that I can, I can keep an eye on. I also, I have my uh, tech, su my support line, right? The, the phone line uh, also can have logs, right? As we know with telephony APIs, you can get the, those logs. And also Twitter, so you can r wonder why we're looking at all this, what's so important? Well, imagine that um, a customer is trying to order uh, a product from your site, and then uh, an, an error failed. And when this failure happened, the customer will see it right away. Oh, they, they probably cannot, because it's probably happening in the background. All they see is cannot add product to cart, for example. So they don't know what's going on. They get, they're getting frustrated. So what they end up doing, they are probably going to tweet about this. This company sucks. They don't, they don't know what they're doing, right? So if we have a way that we can actually capture all that data in the system and also be able to correlate that data from um, the customer ID, uh, the customer handle on Twitter, their IP address, and also the middleware, what the actual error uh, happened. So not only I have a system where I'm able to capture in real time and correlate, but also alert me that something bad is happening so that this doesn't happen to the next customer right away. I can actually take care of it, take action. So the same scenario, imagine that in the, in the world of security. Uh, you know, these days attacks are coming in different vectors. We call them multi-vector attacks, especially the ransomware, right? Uh, uh, WannaCry and, and other very variants of the ransomware attack. They come into different uh, vectors. That means you click on a link on the, on the email, uh, you go to that site, the site downloads malware, the malware starts sitting on your, on your machine, and encrypts your, your machine, and sends the phones home, and then does all the other additional <coughs> stuff, uh, uh, you know, for updates or for notification. So all those different uh, data points I just mentioned, it's, if you had a system where you can collect them and be able to, uh, in real time, watch for variations of that, not only pre collect, uh, define, identify, but also be able to predict in the future any patterns like that happening. So Splunk, we take that machine data and we make it accessible and usable and valuable for everyone. By that means, we give you the tool to access your data, to analyze your data, also to make use of that data uh, by visualizations, and also make it valuable to everyone. So a Splunk can be used for, by everyone in the organization from different use cases, whether it's operational, IT, security, and business analytics even. So that's our typical diagram what Splunk platform looks like. Uh, the core is Splunk Core, Splunk Enterprise. Uh, the Splunk Enterprise can ingest machine data from any location and any, any source. So whether, as a, here you can see, it's uh, sources from uh, on-premise server, cloud APIs, uh, uh, you know, <coughs> your security product, uh, your standard security product, your flow data, all that can be ingested in Splunk. And the unique thing is it can be done at, at scale. We have customers using Splunk in petabytes and, and soon exabytes. So Splunk can scale to ingest all that data at a high volume and also at different velocity and different type of data. So different, uh, whatever it's, you know, uh, XML, JSON, and what have you. Uh, 
Once you ingest that data, Splunk gives you the ability to answer questions. You can search on in that data, right? You can say, you know, I want to look for all IP addresses, all, all events related to this IP address. So that's a simple question. You can also do analytic, analytical questions, statistical questions, predictive analytics, all that capability is available in our Splunk language. Uh, you also can uh, create uh, you know, visualizations, reports, and, and dashboards, and alerts. You can set up an alert to alert you, uh, you know, when, when a certain correlation or, or, or an event happened, uh, triggered. Uh, also, it's a platform in the sense that we open up, Splunk is open up for developers to develop their own uh, plugins uh, or even their own visualizations. We call those apps, apps on top of, uh, uh, of, uh, on top of Splunk. And today, Gigamon will be showing you their app. Uh, for Splunk. So to emphasize, kind of like one of the, one of the secret sauces is the schema on the fly. What does that mean that we'd, we're not schema based? You know, we're not like the traditional database where, uh, you know, uh, DBA has to go and then specify the, the schemas, uh, the, the attributes and the type of attributes. Actually, we extract the schema on the fly. So we index the data all, uh, all on indexers. And then when on search time, Splunk is smart enough to extract the field and uh, field value pairs from known source types. And also you can specify your own source type. You can actually teach Splunk, say yeah, this is how to extract the, the, the value and, and, and the properties. And that's important because when, uh, when data changes over time, uh, you don't, you're, not storing, you're not storing the schema. All you're storing is uh, rules about how to extract the important stuff from the, from the data. So that means that even the ch data changes in format, you still cannot ex extract that. Uh, typically, yeah, we collect data from logs, uh, from configurations, config like, you know, CMDBs, from APIs, wire data, we have an app for wire data, and also scripts. You can actually, uh, you know, as a developer or, or anyone can write scripts to actually, in, uh, you know, to uh, ingest the data into Splunk. Now let's talk about security world. Uh, we all hear about uh, security information event management systems. These are the, the, the solution, the software that everybody uses in security world to kind of analyze uh, in real time all their security data because you know there's a lot of events happens like by the thousands and, and so, uh, a, a day and, and, and you know and, and five digits number of events you can see in typical uh, security operation center. Well those legacy sim I call, we call them uh, they have not evolved to adapt with the new world of big data. They don't scale well they're having issues because they're all based on some uh, you know old architectures of typical uh, client server or, or maybe database, uh, and, uh, typical an R RDBS database. They're limited of how you can detect scale of all the vectors I mentioned uh, for, for, uh, for uh, ransomware. There's so many things you have to look at, so they're limited on what capability uh, you, you can look at. And a very important point to do is your traditional SIM only looks at security data uh, from firewalls and, and intrusion detection and, and typical uh, data exfiltration tools, but today, as I mentioned, with the WannaCry attack, with the um, ransomware, these attacks are coming through email, right? So you need to look at email. That's another data a data source. You need to look at maybe web traffic too. Th those are normal, regular traffic that the attackers are actually using, leveraging to get into your system. You know, we, we, we've heard. I mean, this is an old news, but the target attack. The actually, the hackers were sitting on the network. For, for months and months and nobody noticed them because they actually logged in and they're using the server. So the, all that traffic in green was actually security related traffic but was not being monitored or watched. So that's where Splunk comes in. We actually give you the ability to ingest data, all the data, whether it's security or non-security, and now you can able to correlate that to look for all these patterns and attacks, uh, detect those, uh, those vector of attacks. So we built a Splunk Enterprise Security. It's our premium app on top of Splunk platform. And with that, we have the, an, it's an, what we call an analytics-driven SIM. And it's all uh, based on uh, how I can have more efficient correlation searches uh, between all those the different data sources and have those framework like risk framework, uh, um, uh, alert, alert framework, and notable events. Uh, and the idea here is that we actually have customers feeding all those tens of thousands a day events into Splunk and, and asking Splunk, give me just the top 10, top 10 notables I need to look at at, at this moment. 
So in a way, we are actually helping you uh, figure out, you know, uh, get you all the only the top ten that you care about that you have to care based on all, all on uh, the correlations on the risk uh, f framework that we have, and also on the um, on the we have also other frameworks like asset and threat intelligence. So you can feed in a threat intelligence data feed that also can help you enrich. Uh, your, your, your correlations and, and give you ability to now have a better detection on, on what's going on. Uh, so, so Spongy Device Security, the foundation of that is a, a bunch of uh, frameworks uh, that, you know, assets, so you can, in your business, be able to tag an asset to say, you know, uh, this, uh, this is an HR server and I see a lot of spike in this traffic and, 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 uh, and uh, anomalies then this is a high risk. Um, and also a threat intelligence framework. Uh, the notable events, uh, that's, a, uh, that's another component of, uh, the where you actually we flag, you give you the top 10 incidents that you have to uh, investigate. And uh, the risk analysis and also incident investigation are all part of that uh, capability that have been Splunk. And today we're gonna be talking about ad adaptive response which is now a capability for Splunk to actually not only ingest the data, correlate and analyze data, but also give you ability to take action from when that, an event happens, a notable happens, you can right away automate a triggering of, of an action. So the Splunk ecosystem looks like this. As I mentioned, we have the Splunk Enterprise, which is our core, the core, uh, the platform. And then we have an on-premise offering, the Splunk Enterprise and the cloud. And Splunk Enterprise Security is one of our premium premium um, solutions. And we have an ecosystem of partners, security partners, network partners, all partners uh, co you know, uh, contributing with their own uh, data ingest the plugins, or also their apps. And as we'll, we'll talk about today, Gigamon with their adaptive response app uh, for, for ES. So where do we go from here? So, Splunk now is, with the capabilities that we have, and then additionally with adaptive response, we're addressing many issues, especially issues around security operations. Security operations is complex these days. You have to look at many different security domains. We have so many different security products to look at, and they don't all work together, right? You have typically, you bring in uh, an endpoint product, a network, a firewall, and then also uh, a, cloud, uh, a cloud broker, cloud security broker product. So you have all those products to look at, and an, an analyst is overwhelmed by all these tools. So that's a complexity issue. And also, how do you get the right, the right uh, uh, analyst uh, to, to, uh, to be able to use the, these tools? So having a common tool uh, that will ingest those uh, solutions, and also a common language that, that uh, those analysts can, can use, and common interface, is, is very helpful. Uh, we talk about an incident response and then how the challenges are <coughs> these days to address, to be, be able to, uh, to, to address an incident very quick. And everybody's racing to say, what's the shortest time I can catch an incident and respond to an incident? And really the challenges around incident response from this research shows that most of the time is you uh, spent is on, on looking, for, uh, looking at the scope of, this, uh, uh, of, of the incident, trying to scope it, uh, basically sifting through all those thousands and thousands of events and also find a way to quickly remediate. So a lot of people spend, spend a lot of time to, uh, on, on, on those, uh, on those uh, different steps of, of, uh, of uh, incident response. So we need a way to shorten that, sh shorten that, uh, that time. So Splunk is actually doing that. That's one of our missions is actually give you all the capabilities so you can uh, give you all the power when you ingest all that data, give you better notables and correlation searches and across all those different domains. And, all, and not only be able to ingest that data, but also now you can take action on that data. So you can say, you know, I'm not confident this is, a, 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 this is an incident. I need more, more enrichment, more data. So you can actually go and fetch another API on demand to get more, more uh, uh, scores and enrichment on that data. And also you can take action. So from Splunk uh, Enterprise Security, you can actually quarantine a device through the adaptive response. You can actually uh, run another playbook like for, with our integration with Phantom. Uh, and so on and so on. You can do that, all those outbound actions now with the Splunk Adaptive Response. So Adaptive Response is our initiative, it's an initiative and it's a framework. Uh, the initiative is 
uh, we open up uh, a this initiative for uh, our security partners and, 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 and our ecosystem to contribute with their APIs, to integrate their APIs with our uh, data response frame framework. So then you can now automate, uh, within Splunk, automate uh, uh, taking the action based on a search result, a correlation search. And also, it's going to help you approve the, you know, a quickly, uh, you know, the efficiency of, of what we talked about, efficiency of incident response and detection. Uh, this is just a few of our partners. Gigamon is our, our from, uh, both providing the network adaptive response action and also the, uh, the, the response, both uh, taking a, a mitigation right away. Uh, technically, adaptive response is a framework that's built in into our enterprise security. It consists of a, a libraries and, 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 a, and a specification. We call that the common action model. It's a, it's, it's a specification where uh, a developer will actually plug in their APIs, and we, have, we provide the tool to give you the ability to map your API or, or your actions into, into this model. And the actions comes in three different flavors. You can have an informational action where you're calling an API just to get metadata about the, for, for additional context or enrichment. You can actually have an, uh, a call to actually change a permission. So the Okta, for example, the Okta adaptive response actually ch disables an account when something bad happens. Let's say they notice this uh, person trying to log in from different locations, and then there's something you know just suspicious. So they can actually put the account on hold through that API call. Control, you can actually change the policy on the firewall. Uh, the Gigamon, uh, Gigamon adaptive response actually makes, makes a change in, into your, uh, your, your, your network, the, and into the tool. And the metadata, typically, we categorize those adaptive response actions for you so you can actually be able to, uh, you know, when you work in your incident response and you want to know how, what better action to take, you actually have a way to quickly navigate those. Um, so this is a screenshot how adaptive response can be uh, triggered within enterprise security. It can be done, it can be attached to a notable. That's the automated part. You can actually say if this happens, this correlation or rule happens, trigger these actions. Or you can run on demand. While you're actually investigating an incident, you, wanna, uh, you want to trigger an action uh, right away as, a, as an analyst or as a responder. You can do that right away uh, manually from within enterprise security, right when you're looking at the events that, uh, that are reported to you. Uh, we talked about this. Uh, so that's typically the use cases around that is to reduce the, the time for, for uh, incident response and, and the de detection and incident response. Um, that's in, the, in just um, what you know, our <coughs> core offering on uh, you know, enterprise security. And, uh, and our adaptive response framework. Thank you.